Hi hey guys, today we're going to talk about the lung alveoli. Uh, go over these first few bullet points here. First, uh, this is where the oxygen exchange occurs. Secondly, uh, they're found at the end of the bronchial tree. They, have a, they show a great example of the structure-functional relationship that we've uh, been emphasizing this semester. And it's really the defining structure of the beginning of the respiratory zone. So anything before the actual alveolus is going to be part of the conducting zone and then once the alveoli start popping up then we've entered the respiratory zone which makes sense that's this is where the oxygen exchange occurs so they're found on what are called terminal bronchioles so I'll draw one right here you can imagine this is the, the ending branch of the bronchial tree and essentially it looks like a vine of, gr of grapes so just like grapes that you can buy at the grocery store that's more or less the way that it's, it's defined uh, in your textbook and as well as in many other sources so we have these as this is uh, a alveolus alveolus so that's singular for alveoli the collection of them are called the alveolar sac. Alveolar sac. And uh, the way that they're formed creates this duct that runs inside of the alveolar sac. And it's mostly made up of the walls of the alveoli themselves. And that's called the alveolar duct. Alveolar duct. Cool. So we'll add a few more bullet points in here. Alveoli are what account for most of the volume of the lungs. Alveoli account for most of the volume of the lungs. They're not just this open balloon. Most of volume of lungs. Your book says that the average lung has something like 1500 square feet of surface area due to the amount due to the, to the number of alveoli found in your lungs. Secondly, alveoli are connected. These aren't just individual uh, little balloons at the end of the the bronchial tree. Uh, they're all connected. So alveoli are connected. Alveoli are connected. via alveolar pores. Alveolar pores. This becomes important in disease states where if you have one alveolus that, alveolus that's not doing its job anymore, it's not efficient to just keep pumping gas into that and expecting it to do something. So if they're all connected and one's not doing anything, then that gas is just going to diffuse uh, through these channels and go through to an alveoli that's working properly. Alveolus. So this structure is where the respiratory membrane lives, or is, is what creates the respiratory membrane. And this is really where the gas exchange occurs. Respiratory membrane. And your book defines it as three layers. Three layers as defined by the book defined by text. And the first layer that's actually going to connect to the outside world is going to be the alveolar epithelium. Alveolar epithelium. After that, you have this fused layer, which is actually fused basement membrane. And capillary epithelium. So you have this membrane here, right? So you're going to have an epithelial layer and then a basement membrane. So, and capillary endothelium. I said epithelium the first time, but 
capillary endothelium. And then finally we have the capillary endothelium layer itself. Capillary endothelium. And this is what creates the respiratory membrane where gas exchange really occur occurs. And this alveolar epithelium that's part of the respiratory membrane is going to be type 1 alveolar cells. So there's going to be two types of alveolar cells. Types of alveolar cells. So this guy, type 1. Alveolar epithelium. Ooh. Type 1. Which is simple squamous. Simple squamous. And this is good for gas exchange, right? Simple squamous is good for diffusion. Gas exchange occurs. And then type 2. Type 2 is going to be simple cuboidal. Simple cuboidal. If you remember, we talked about simple cuboidal is good for secretion. Simple cuboidal. We'll see at that. And this is where your alveoli secrete surfactant. Secrete surfactant. What is that? Let's make that a different color. Secrete surfactant. So. What is surfactant? Surfactant is going to be this detergent-like molecule. Detergent-like molecule that decreases the surface tension of water. Decreases surface tension. Tension of water. Why is this important? Without surfactant, your alveoli actually couldn't overcome the, the intermolecular forces of surface tension in order to expand, and you, would, you wouldn't be able to get uh, enough gas into your, into your lungs in order to um, have enough oxygen transfer to, to power your body. So one thing, let me, let me take a step back here. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention, I, I said it in the respiratory membrane, but I talked about this capillary endothelium. So this whole, I'm going to use red again. This whole area is going to be interwoven and surrounded by capillary beds. Interwoven and surrounded by capillary beds. So I'm just going to leave this as surrounded by capillary beds. And that's what's going to make this respiratory membrane possible is just all the capillaries that are running through there that allow for this gas exchange. Surrounded by capillary beds. So you have deoxygenated blood going and transferring CO2 out of the lungs and, and picking up O2. And now that should make sense to how the respiratory membrane is created. We have the alveolar epithelium fused with the basement membrane of the capillaries and then the capillary endothelium itself. Talk about the two types of alveolar cells. One for gas exchange and one to secrete surfactant. And then what surfactant is exactly and why it's important. And thanks, guys, and I'll talk to you later on this week.